Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Please take a seat. Good morning. My name is Pap Guy. I'm the CEO of IntraHealth International. And um, I have the pleasure of starting the session this morning. And uh, you saw in the title we have for this radical change. What it is really is a few minutes to reflect, because we are also celebrating Interhealth 40th anniversary. Um, time flies, as the banner says, uh, when you, you're doing good work. And um, so this gives us an opportunity to just pause a little bit and talk a little bit. You cannot really talk about tenacity uh, without change. Change is the underlying context under which we are talking about how in the development community we should be behaving moving forward. So I have a few slides, it's just uh, four or five, uh, trying to reflect and describe uh, what's happening uh, in our landscape, in our global development landscape. I wanted to share some of those thoughts with you um, if the slide advances. <laughs> Wanna help? Okay. Um, so, what I think is making it a little easier for us is that we do have a framework for looking at what we do. And that's when the SDG come to play. We have SDG 3, which is really focused on this idea, especially 3.8, of achieving universal health coverage. It's been a theme. Uh, some of you who participated in the uh, micro lab yesterday, so a very interesting debate. Even if we had to wear a different hat, <laughs> and um, I, I found myself defending, uh, taking the position anti-UHC, just to correct the record, I'm a really pro UHC, <laughs> and I think we need to do it. I just want us to do it smarter than what I think we are doing right now. But that we have that framework to look at what we're doing. Um, oops, excuse me. But this is the problem. The problem is, although there's been tremendous progress, uh, today at least half of the world is not fully covered for essential uh, health services. And that is just not satisfactory. And the status quo will not do. This is why it's interesting to talk about change. And it's even interesting to talk about radical change. Because to me, the underlying reason is there is urgency. It is the fact that we cannot take 50 years, which is what development as we know it today, has kind of taken, really, to get us to where we are. So I'm sure you will agree with me that we could do better. We cannot afford to do that. We could do better because, like I like to say, we have on this planet enough brain power. I was sharing with my colleagues, we happen to be sitting in the triangle of North Carolina, known for the highest density of PhD in these countries. Uh, anyway, there's enough power, there's enough brain power, there's enough financial resources. We all agree that it is not the problem. And there is actually a lot of new and different kinds of actors that have entered this space. So I think we can dream the big dream. We can get there. But I think we have to embrace doing things in a way that is radically different. That's what IntraHealth is committed about is committed for uh, as we reflect on our 40th anniversary. The work is not finished. We have a lot of unfinished business. I do not want to pick on uh, a specific country, but Nigeria is big enough and important enough for the continent of Africa that it's worthwhile taking time, stopping and, and taking the time to look at and you will agree with me that this picture could be much, much more improved if we do things the right way. As I was thinking, I, 
trying to construct this visual, uh, I was thinking how I can describe what I think is, is happening. And I, I chose this conventional development paradigm because I think we're still living with this paradigm. We're trying to move into a new paradigm, but I think it would be important to sit and think about what characterizes this paradigm that, under which we've been operating. I think it's been much more simpler, linear, and siloed, frankly. We have looked at global health as global health. It is so siloed that even in this country, when people think about global health, they think they're not concerned. They think about international health. But global does include local, by the way. That is the definition. The thing we are doing in the Casamance in Senegal are very applicable in rural North Carolina. There's no doubt in my mind. There's a lot of lessons that are being learned. There's a lot of innovation that is being um, undertaken, which is very much could be applied to this country as well. So in general, I think there has been this predominance of verticality. We tend to see the world in very vertical ways. We see them in vertical programming. We see it in vertical financing. You know, people who care about a specific disease, that's what they think about. Um, the education folks see themselves as being in the education sector. Uh, that's how the money comes. That's how the financing is done. So it's interesting to think about that as we're thinking about undoing a lot of that as we enter a much more integrated way. I think there's also been a high dependence on overseas development assistance. Uh, this is kind of the, the, the money that is dedicated to supporting overseas. And fortunately, when you look at that, it's the next bullet. When you look at that, it's characterized by the fact that it's richer countries trying to help poor countries. So there's this imbalance that has been created. I'm not saying it's good or bad, but that's kind of the fact, that's the picture. You have high income countries, you have multilateral, basically trying to implement their vision in the countries. No wonder it takes us so much time, because it's not always understood, and there's always a gap between that conversation and what happens actually in the countries. There is also, there is limited number of actors, but I must admit, I think it is changing. It used to be that this field was characterized by a few NGOs, very well known, the Triangle have a lot of those, a lot of you are coming from FHI, IntraHealth, RTI, there were a few of us. As we look at the landscape today, I think you agree that it's changing. And we've been very focused on infectious disease. In fact, all of the systems that we've built in these countries were designed for combating HIV AIDS, eliminating malaria, and so forth. Okay, what are we seeing today? Well, I'm actually saying, I'm using the term evolving paradigm because I think we have our foot in the old paradigm and we're trying to change. So rather than what we did in the past and what we're doing, it's very nebulous. It is, it is a continuum maybe, but it's, it's evolving. Characterized by these things, I think it's very much, it's complex, it's circular, multi-donor, actors, this idea of co-creation, uh, more focus on equality. Well, you heard Gitinji's presentation yesterday. Um, collaboration, I think there's room here to look at how we collaborate and on what basis do we collaborate. At switch point, of course, that's why we want to do this. Let's bring people who are not usually in the same room and get them, give them the opportunity to collaborate in new ways. Um, technology, of course, is such a big factor in everything that we do. Um, tackling multi-issues. For the first time, people are saying, how about mental health? How about safe surgery? It's not just because people are poor that they, they, they should not have surgery. So all of these new issues, mental health, uh, we know it was time that we finally start looking at. But that's the world we're in today. It is just, it's, it's, 
It requires cross-sectoral approaches and shifting disease burden for NCD. That's, that's a new profile. So that's, that's where we are. Um, so at Switchpoint, that's what we're trying to do. We are trying to spark innovation but taking this into context. And we would like you to really have a sense of innovation that is not just technology driven. Great, but let's not consider game change in technology based innovation alone, because that won't be enough. It is absolutely necessary that we think about innovation in partnerships, that we think about innovations in systems. So think about it. At, at Switchpoint, what we're promoting is really a much more comprehensive and complex innovation. So that's, the, that's when I think about change, I don't have much to tell you about why it's important and why we need to be resilient and why we need to be tenacious. It is just, uh, that's what it will take. So, I wanted to share that, and I wanted to share that in the context of our 40th anniversary and help us be that organization that only remains relevant, but also that think a little bit ahead of the curve. That's been our, our motto. It's been, what can we do? Because we believe that the future belongs to people who do the best job anticipating what that future is going to look like. But let's not Get, uh, keep our eyes off the prize. It is about saving lives, and it is about improving lives. And let's do what it will take to reach that goal. Thank you very much.